Howdy y'all, Banjo Ben here, along with Mr. Jake Stogdale, the manager of the general store. And I'm excited because we're going to do a lesson today on how to restring mandolins. But more than that, we're gonna talk about what you don't do whenever you restring a mandolin. <laughs> and we're also gonna examine some different kinds of tail pieces. We're gonna talk about different string choices, advantages and disadvantages of those. We're just gonna have a good time here. So if you're watching on BanjoBenClark.com, it's a GoPay member, just scroll down, you'll see the rest of the video segments for you there. And if you're watching somewhere else, we would love to have you on board as a Go Pit member where you can see hundreds of lessons just like this one. You ready to restring a mandolin? I'm as ready as I've ever been in my entire <laughs> state of existence. Wow, yeah. well, then we must do it. We must do it. It is calling. Proceed we shall. <laughs> hey Jake, we're actually gonna start with what not to do. Okay. Folks, stop. Before you restring a mandolin, stop. If you've never done it before, and Jake, tell them what not to do. Uh, probably first thing, most of the time that you see people do that you probably shouldn't, if it's just a basic restring and you're not in need of any additional setup, uh, you really just want to go through the strings one at a time, um, two at a time tops. Yeah. You don't want to take all the tension off and then restring them all from, from scratch. Uh, it puts a little undue stress and wear on some of the parts over time. If you do it that way, every time, and you have to reset your bridge every time and it can just be uh, more work than necessary. That'd yeah. be the first thing. So if you're a beginner mandolin restringer, you do not want this bridge to move. And a lot of folks don't realize that this is free floating. It's just kept mm -hmm. there by tension, right? Yeah, it's not glued or nailed down or nothing. Yeah, so if you remove all the strings, then that thing's gonna fall off. Or if you even remove most of the strings, then it's gonna have weird pressures on it. And if you touch it, it's going to move, and that's going to mess with your intonation mm -hmm. and how the mandolin tunes and frets out. Even if you just <laughs> loosen half of the strings, it'll slide to one side or the other because of the, the pressure. Yeah. And the strings are fanned, and they'll shift it. So Right. So if that happens, it's not the end of the world. We'll help you get it fixed back. Uh, now we know not to remove all the strings at once. So if we're going to remove a string, which side do you like to start with, Jake? Um, usually I'll just start with the G string, the bass side is closest to me. Okay. So, uh, we can, we can start there. Now, how would you get to that string? Because it looks to me like you're getting uh, blocked. Yeah. G strings blocked. Yeah. First thing I do, there's all different kinds of tail pieces, but we chose this one to, to demonstrate with this is most common. Um, this is the, uh, sheet metal, you know, old Gibson style tail piece with a cover plate. Yeah. So, um, what we're going to do is pop that off first. I'll show you how I do it. They can have a lot of tension on them. So I'll take a rag or something to save my thumbs because that is just thin sheet metal and it can dig into your thumbs quite a bit. And uh, I'll use that for cushion and I'll get on each side of those little wings there. And then I'll use my fingers here and just create a, you know, a leverage effect. And you can move in kind of small movements that way. Sometimes you're, least, you're less expensive tail cover pieces or tail piece covers <laughs> um, are going to be more difficult to remove. Yeah. Um, sometimes they're too easily removed. They'll fall off and you kind of have to bend these back. Yeah. yeah but uh, you point. just, you've just uh, demonstrated. Now this one, it looks like we uncovered some kind of um, rocketry mm -hmm. thing here. Yeah, I think it was designed by Da Vinci. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have strings going everywhere. Yeah. So if we start with our, with our G strings and we're going to start down here mm -hmm. and we don't have to worry about anything right now as far as strings interfering with others. Right. But, um, what do you, what do you do first? Uh, I would just loosen that string starting up here with the tuner. Okay. Um, how do you know you're listening? Oh, you play it and then you just turn it. Okay. So you listen for the pitch to go down, mm -hmm. of course, because if you go the other way, you're tuning up, then you can pop that string. Yeah. Yeah. Which will be the same end result, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it will. Uh, and one thing that makes this a lot quicker that I like to use is one of these string winder yeah, tools. Yeah, those are cool. These are universal, too. It has a, a long section for guitars and, and banjos and stuff. And then if you go crossways, it's a short section for mandolin. So I fit this short section on there. And uh, you can unwind that string in a hurry that way. And then once you get it to this point, you don't even have to wind anymore. I just drop it and then I'll just unwrap the string like so. Pull it I like to leave also the hole lined up mm -hmm. pointing toward the headstock and the other side of the hole pointing toward the the bridge because that's where, the way that we're going to have to restring the mandolin. Right. Okay, yep. So then you just pull it right off that yeah, tailpiece. Yeah, then it'll just come off the hook. Sometimes, you know, these hooks, they're just stamped out of those tail pieces, so they can, you know, you, they can hang in there and whatever. You just work them out. Okay. Not, a, not a big deal. 
And so would you, if you're going to restring this whole mandolin, which we're just going to do one string on each side for demonstration purposes, mm -hmm. but you would then take the other G string off? Not okay. necessarily. I actually leave the other G string until I tune that one up. Um, you can, it'll give you a little more room. It just depends on how comfortable you are with that kind of thing. Okay. So uh, if you do take both G strings off, it won't hurt anything. Um, but I like to leave one up just as a way of reference when I'm tuning the new one up. I match that one. Then oh, okay. I'll remove cool. that one. Yeah, that way, because a lot of folks will um, accidentally tune too high and right. snap a brand new string. So if you yep. leave this G string on to play as a reference, which we're about to show you, then you're sure not to do that. Exactly. That, that's why I suggest that, because uh, if you're using a digital tuner uh, for reference, it can show you G notes in several octaves. Right. So uh, this way you know which pitch you're trying yep. to match. Okay. So we'll talk about string types here in a moment in a different video segment, um, just to help you more easily reference what you're looking for. But um, we're, let's go ahead and string this one up. So okay. Show us the two ends of the mandolin string. All right, so one end you have the core, which extends past the the winding. Okay. Those are the two parts of your strings. The plain strings are just cores. They don't have winding around them like the uh, mm -hmm. bass strings do. And then this has that. some kind of bronze winding. Yep, phosphor bronze. The other end is the core is exposed again, and it's twisted in a loop. Yeah. So and these don't have balls like the end of the... Um, guitar strings. Uh, correct, yeah. Just a loop. The most most commonly just a loop. Yeah, unless you got like those Ovation mandolins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, um, so in this case, uh, not not a whole lot of. Uh, you have large shoulders. I'm it very, takes a long time to get around your shoulders <laughs> with this one. Yeah, it's like Paul Bunyan's ox, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you just slip that loop into our designated hook. Yeah. Okay. And you will, we'll get to this point, in, uh, this part in a second, but these wound strings all just have a straight hook. They're, uh, gotcha. yeah. And then the, the unwound strings have kind of a, uh, yeah. um, uh, an extra hook. So to relieve the pressure in a different way Okay. on the string. So this part's kind of, this is the part a lot of people struggle with the mechanics of. You this just, is important folks. You keep tension on the string as you're working with it. So right. you don't okay. have to, you know, I mean, we're not trying to pull the tailpiece off. You just keep it, you know, the, the see, even just letting up a little bit, it's going to pop it loose. Mm -hmm. So while we're going through the post and wrapping it and talking about those details, we want to make sure it stays in our hook okay. down here. Yep. Otherwise you, what you'll find is you wind it and then all of a sudden, you notice the string's not tight and it's come loose and, and you have to redo it. Yeah. And you have it left enough slack. Yeah. And then you have to <clears throat> undo it and redo it, which isn't the end of the world, but. So you're holding tension with your right hand I as am. you thread through. I am. So I, I'll, what I'll do about the middle of the neck, I'll just use it as a hand rest, keep mm -hmm. tension on it. Then I work with my left hand. Yeah. So I can take the slack with my left hand and I'll just thread the uh, core of the string there through that. And that's why Ben said it's easier if you leave them lined up whenever you take yep. the old string off. Yep. So, then, oh, wow. So how much how much slack do you leave here? This seems like a very important part. It is. So um, I'll pull it tight, and then I'll generally back it off about the length of the tuner. Hey, that's an easy way to remember. Yeah. So if you pulled it tight, and, and then, then... You can even use your finger as a point of reference. Back to right there, and that's about the right amount of slack. Right. Cool. That gives you room to wind the string. You can see I come, come Yeah, but it, once you get that slack measured out, even if it did pop off, you could get it started down here. Yeah, and then you could put it back in, yep. true. Okay, now, now this is what everybody wonders about. This, the, the method I like is called the luthier's knot. Um, there are other ways to do it. I prefer this way, so that's the way I'm gonna show you. Um, on all the strings on the left side of the peg head, on the bass strings, you're going to take this part, the the slack. The tail. Yep. yep. And you're going to wrap it around the post to the inside. Okay. Then I'm going to reach underneath this, this portion, underneath it, grab the rest of it, pull it tight. Mm. See that? Yep. Then here's the, the part that really locks it in place. You just kink it back over the top. Ah, you go back the way you came. Back the way you came, over the top. And uh, then we, we have there. a good luthier's knot. And I, all the while, I'm keeping tension. You see how I've wrapped this around my thumb. Yep, so that the string is grabbing itself. Yeah. And you're, you're holding tension with your right hand. Right, exactly. Cool. Then, uh, all, that's that left, handy. all that's left to do at this point is I take my 
handy dandy winding tool. And you're going to turn. Make sure. Yeah. Turn the post to where the string starts to travel to the inside of the peg head. Yep. If you turn it the opposite way, it'll wind to the outside and things aren't going to line up correctly and it's just going to be. Yeah, I want you to notice, folks, on all these strings over here, they all wind to the inside. Mm -hmm. And all these posts over here, they all wind to the inside. That means they're going to be traveling around the post in different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so all four on the left side do it the same way. All four on the right side do it the opposite way. Right. Uh, we just continue that. Now, you know, where I've got my index finger here, I will guide the string as I wrap it to wind down the post. Down the post, not above it. Right. That's important. So you'll see we go just under our previous wrap. Mm-hmm. And we just keep going. And then start pulling the tension, yeah. the and slack out of your right hand. Then at that point, you can just kind of guide it into the nut slot. That's right. And then we make sure it's in our bridge slot down here too. Yep. So you want to correct that. Yeah. Before it gets too tight. All right. There we go. Okay. Uh, that's now. An, that's another advantage, just real quickly. That's another advantage of doing one string at a time is there's no mistaking which nut or bridge slot it goes in. Right. Because you can do that. I've even had them, you know, we set everything up here before we send them. And it's not uncommon to get them from the factory where they're switched. Wow. You know, so we have to redo them. But now the nice thing about, I have my reference. While I'm turning it, I just strike both strings together until they yeah. match. Bam. Now what do we do with that tail? Well, you can have surgery for that kind of thing, but <laughs> we just nip it off. Uh, so these string, the string winder tool I was showing you has a, yeah. uh, it's a string cutter. Yeah, it's made by It's really handy. And so How I'll, close do you cut it? I cut right as close as I can. If you're using this kind, you probably won't do this, um, but with some of the you know, just side cutters and standard wire cutters, you can accidentally cut the string that you just... I've done it before. Yeah, you want to be careful with that. But just take the, the loose part and kind of rest this against the post at an angle. I kind of angle it at a 45 to make sure I'm not cutting any of the string below it. Mm -hmm. You just squeeze it until it's gone. Okay. And there's hardly anything left sticking out, just a little bit. Yeah. And that's important because if we leave a long tail out, man, those things will grab you, won't they? Yeah. Yeah, they'll uh, they'll carve you like a Thanksgiving turkey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and look at doing just really quickly, doing a string on the other side. Okay. And I'll put it in fast motion here, as you take it off, and that way, um, because we've already talked through it, and that way it'll speed it up. Yeah, a bit. it's the same thing. It's just the opposite. Okay. So <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So here, it looks a little different, doesn't it? It does. Um, and this is just to uh, help with string breakage at the at the tailpiece. Okay. Um, so what you do, you have a, um, a horizontal hook that the loop actually goes in, and then the the uh, the want, uh, the word I'm looking for the mm -hmm. wound part of the string, the twisted part, yep. will slide under the. Well, I've seen a lot of people. Re you know, restring and not even use that. They'll just put the loop on this part of the, yeah. on this hook. You can do that too. That's going to be fine most of the time anyway. This just a little extra insurance to put a little less strain on the thinnest yeah, part. Yeah, you're just spreading you're, the tension out amongst the string. Yeah, and where the string actually catches the tension, it's braided like a rope, so it's stronger there. Right, So okay. that, that's the idea. Cool. So, so then we just go, side. we're just going to go back with the same... <clears throat> arrangement there aren't we yep and of course make sure that we're grabbing the right strings yeah all your string packs will be labeled um yeah. and this is called the over. first string yep. the highest string is called the first string because, which is an e which is an e and the second string is your a mm -hmm. third string is your d fourth string is your yep. g cool so so what are you gonna do uh, i'm just gonna reverse engineer what i took apart Right. Just like so. So now we are just going to repeat the process that we did earlier. Mm -hmm. We just make sure that we string through. Um, it's helpful to leave leave those holes aligned as you did. Now, you can on these leave a little more slack if you want. Uh, this is still plenty, but on the unwound strings, they don't take as much. They're, the diameter is smaller. Mm -hmm. They don't take up as much space, space on the post. 
Yeah. So if you want good downward pressure on your nut, you might want to leave a little bit extra, maybe go a peg and a half. Okay. Uh, so demonstrate that again. Like pull the string tight and then show, yeah. put your finger there. It's tight and then I, you know, kind of mark about where I'd want it, peg and half, and then just pull it back until and your finger that's, touches. that's where you, okay. And then this time, I'm going to do now, the same oh, way. Yeah. Let me go around here again. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll try no, to have good. I'll try to have not so wide shoulders next time. <laughs> so you pull it to the inside. The inside of the peg head. That's the key. Then we're gonna go under. Uh -huh. You know, pull it under the actual playing Same. surface of the string. Pull it tight around the post. Pull it tight there. Don't yep. leave any slack. And then kink it immediately back over the string the opposite way. Okay. Now it's locked in. Yep. So now you just have to worry about keeping pressure on. Yep. Make sure that it's still on your pegs down here. Yeah, and the treble ones don't often slip out as much as the bass ones right. because they're gotcha. locked in extra. Then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna wind. Uh, they're gonna turn the opposite way this time right. because you want them to go to the inside right. of the peg head. So we just wind it up and I'm using my fingers still as a guide to make sure that I it tightly winds down the post. Gotcha. Several good wraps there, they're nice and tight. And then, uh, there we go. Now likewise, check. yep, make sure everything's the right slots. aligned. Yep. And then also, depending on what kind of material you have here, mm -hmm. sometimes I've, what I've noticed is that it's push, it pushes the material up and this is not resting on that material. Yeah, so you slip under so it. So you <laughs> take this opportunity to pull your string up and make sure it gets back on top of that material. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of that material? Well, um, the, the felt is a, a an attempt to keep everything uh, from buzzing. You know, yeah. uh, you got loose metal and strings that vibrate. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there are some tail pieces that have better systems built in, and we actually have a, an aftermarket option that's really affordable. Yeah, let's talk about that next. So okay. let's, let's look at the different types of strings. Mm -hmm. And then also we have some mandolins laid out here, different types of tail pieces, because not all are created equal. <clears throat> and then we'll also talk about the issue of the grommets and yeah. um, and why it's helpful to kill some of those overtones. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, hope that was helpful. And if you'd like some more information like strings and tail pieces, then come on over to the website, banjobenclark.com. As a GoPick member, you can see this video and lots, lots more. And also don't, um, don't forget to check out the store, the general store, where you can purchase everything that we've looked at today. We thank you for your support of the general store. We love taking care of y'all. Have a good day.